know he's worthy to be praised, worthy to be exalted, worthy to be lifted up. From the book of Numbers, chapter number 13, Numbers chapter number 13, starting with verse number 26 through 33. Numbers chapter number 13, 
verse 26 through 33. And it reads, And they went and came to Moses, to Aaron, to all the congregation of the children of Israel, unto the wilderness of Paran, to Kadesh, and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation, and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, We came unto the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there, and the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it are men of a great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. I ask God's blessing over the reading and hearing and understanding of his word. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you and we praise you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness and for your kindness, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. We thank you for our rising this morning, for being clothed in our right minds, Lord. We thank you for every good and every perfect gift that comes from above. We thank you, Lord, that you're a God who never changes. You're the same yesterday and today and forevermore. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege to come into your house, to gather with your people, to worship your holy name. We thank you, Lord, that, that you spared our life. We thank you, Lord, that you made the way for us to get to your house just another day. We thank you, Lord, for a time that we can lift our voice in praise to you. We thank you, Lord, for all of your goodness. We thank you, Lord, for the trials that you brought us through. We thank you, Lord, for the mountains and, and, and the dangerous places that you brought us through. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness and for your kindness to us, Lord. Today, Lord, we praise your wonderful name because there's nobody like you. There's nobody like you. We give you praise today. And Lord, we come to ask you to have your way in our life lives of our loved ones and our friends, Lord. We pray, Lord, for uh, those that we know that are uh, destitute, those who have met some disaster along the way, those who have met some difficulty along the way, Lord, we pray that you, Lord, you would have your way in their life as well. Lord, that you would touch them, that you would heal them, that you would bless them, Lord. Uh, there are some even in this congregation, Lord, stand in the need of your touch in their body, in their mind, Lord. Oh, God, we confess we need you, Lord. We need you more than we need anything else. We need you, Lord, more than, as Job said, our necessary food, Lord. We need you more uh, than, than, than anything and anybody else in our life, Lord. So we pray, God, today that you'd have your way in our life, Lord. Bless us, Lord. Then cause us to be a blessing to somebody else. We continue, Lord, to pray uh, for this land, for our cities and this nation and the, even this world that we live in, that, God, you would help us to make a difference. Help us, Lord, to let our light so shine that men might see our good works and then glorify you. Oh, God, and these are, these are dangerous times, Lord, but we know that your grace is sufficient. And so, Lord, we trust you to make a difference in this world. We trust you, Lord, to make a, a, the, the necessary impact in this world today. Lord, to save men's souls, to turn them around, Lord, to save, Lord, to transform their mind, Lord. Oh, God, these are dangerous times. These are difficult days, Lord. Oh, God, but our hope and our trust is in you. Oh, God, we trust you to make the difference, Lord. We trust you, oh, God. We want to be your witnesses in this world. 
So help us, Lord, to be your witness, Lord. Now, Lord, have your way during this time we've come into your house. Oh, God, fill this room with your presence, Lord. Those watching virtually, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you would fill the, those rooms, Lord, as well with your presence, Lord. Don't allow us to leave out of here the same way that we came. Oh, God, but touch our hearts and touch our minds. Strengthen us, Lord. Make us better, Lord, even as we leave this place today, Lord. And we thank you in advance of every blessing, Lord. We give your name the praise, Lord, because there's nobody like you from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, Lord. Your name is to be praised, Lord. So we praise your name and we give you thanks already for all that you're going to do. You're worthy to be praised, worthy to be lifted up, oh God. So have your way, oh God. We that love you, Lord, we give you praise already, for we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give God praise, won't you? Won't you give him praise? Come on, won't you lift him up? Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, join the praise team as they lead us. Hallelujah. Come on, how many of you come today with a mind to bless the Lord? Come on, come on.
Jesus. Thank you, Lord.
Yeah. He's wonderful. Come on, he's wonderful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, give me wonderful praise. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your name. Praise your name. Hallelujah. 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 Wonderful. Wonderful. Hallelujah. Wonderful. He's wonderful. He's wonderful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. So, I, I, our vocabulary just doesn't fit. Uh, you know, we can say the, the best word we can. <laughs> but he's wonderful. And he's great. And he's the greatest. And, and if there's anything past that, he's greater than the greatest. Nobody like our God, nobody to compare with him. He's wonderful. He's wonderful. He's wonderful. Praise God. Amen. Real quickly from the book of Numbers. From the book of Numbers, chapter number 13, verse number 30. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it. For we are well able to overcome it. We are well able to overcome it. Let us go up at once and possess it. For we are well able to overcome it. Let, let, us, let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to come into your house to worship your great name. And now, Lord, we pray that you will speak to us from your word and uh, that we will have ears uh, to hear and a heart to receive, Lord, uh, your word, your engrafted word, which is able to build us up and to give us an inheritance among those that are sanctified. Lord, we thank you in advance for every blessing. We thank you for what you're going to do as a result of us hearing and receiving your word today. We give you praise already. We know that you'll save and that you'll heal and that you will turn around and transform and deliver because you're wonderful. Have your way. And we that love you, we give you praise for it all. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Pray. Come on, give God praise as you take your seat. Hallelujah. 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 Verse number 30. Uh, letter close says, for we are well able to overcome it. Today, we want to preach from uh, this subject. We are well able. We are well able. Amen. Tell your neighbor, we're well able. We are. Amen. Now tell them again like you really mean it. We are well able. Amen. Amen. As as a part of this unshakable kingdom, uh, this kingdom of God uh, that grows and advances and multiplies, uh, we must be assured of God giving us victory. Uh, every change uh, in our life presents a new challenge for us to trust God and to be victorious or rely on our own self and fail. 
Jesus' words to his disciples as well to, uh, as us. He says, I'm come, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And today God wants all believers to, de to declare by faith that we are well able. It, it, it is a, it is a, it is a, a, a declaration of, of faith in God, not so much ourselves, but in God that we are well able. If you remember just a few years back, uh, 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 former President Barack Obama in his, in his first term, before his first term, his slogan was, yes, we can. And I'll tell you uh, that, yes, we can, uh, we saw it manifest before our eyes, uh, although I didn't know that that, that was surely going to come to pass. Uh, I think he had a whole lot more faith than I did. But, but as the train started to move and, and as it started to advance and, and make some progress, I jumped on the train too. I was just glad to, to see him there uh, in the running. But uh, uh, that there is something about us even declaring it and saying it with our mouth and, and really believing it, that, that makes a difference. Now, that's why we tell our children, we try to convince them, even when they have the, 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 the tough subjects in, in school, and as they say, well, I can't do it. We say, yes, you can. Yes, you can do it. Even though we may not even understand it and can help them do it, we believe, yes, you can do it. The, 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 the setting of our text today takes place after Israel has been delivered from Egypt. Uh, and, and if you go back in Numbers chapter 1 through 9, uh, the, the Jews are a people who are obeying God at Mount Sinai. And during this time, uh, God gives Moses the law and he, he, he passes it on to the people. Moses consecrates the, the priests and the Levites for service in the tabernacle and the tabernacle is built and the tabernacle is dedicated, chapters 1 through 9. Then in, in chapter number 10 uh, of Numbers, the Jews start to uh, follow the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire to start on their journey to the, the promised land. Uh, they, they, chapters 1 through 9, they are, they are set for uh, about a year in one place. But in chapter number 10, they start to make progress. And then in chapter number 11, the problems start. And I come to tell you today, until you start to move forward, you know, you, you're probably not going to have a whole lot of problems. But when you determine that you're going to move forward in God, you're going to advance, you're going to grow, you're going to make some progress, then you can, you can rest assured that the enemy is going to come on the attack. So Numbers chapter 11 and ch chapter number 12 describe the instances of, of complaining that caused Israel's progress to, to, to the promised land to be uh, temporarily interrupted. They have to stop and let God solve some problems before they can move forward. So, so no, 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 no major problems until they start to move forward. And many times to move forward, what we've got to do is first we've got to fight our own human nature uh, within us that wants the, the, the comfort that we've always had. It's always more comfortable to just stay where you are, to, just to maintain, because I know how to do this, and, and I've been doing this for a while, and if I keep on doing this, I'm going to be comfortable. Uh, but but, but that's, that's not always going to bring you the progress and the advancement that you and I need to make in our life, and especially as it relates to the kingdom of God. God intends for his kingdom to grow and to advance. We, we, we also have to fight the, the enemy from outside that wants us to remain stagnant so that we don't move forward and make progress. Matthew chapter number 11 and verse number 12, New Living Translation says, The kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing, and violent people are attacking it. 
uh, uh, the, the, the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it by force. And whenever we start moving, whenever we start advancing, whenever we make up our mind, we're going to be better, we're going to grow, uh, we're, we're going to study, we're, we're going to be a better witness for God, we're going to live the, the best life we can for God, you can expect that the enemy will come on the attack. And to go forward with God, we've got to believe that we are well able. Faith is an essential element to follow God. So we cannot stop. We can't be stalled. We can't retreat. We can't tuck tail and run and hide. If we're going to be uh, the very best witnesses for God, we've got to make up our mind that we are well able. That on our way, on the advance, on the way to moving forward, we're going to keep on going and we are well able to overcome. In the text, Israel is journeying to the promised land. They're journeying to Canaan and standing on the border. And God promised them that, that Canaan would be uh, their rest, their promised land. Because they would come, and, and, and God had already told them, when you come to this place, when you come to the, the promised land, you're going to have houses you didn't build. And, and you're, going to have, you're going to have vineyards that you didn't plant. You're going to walk into a good situation, but it doesn't mean that the good situation is not going to come without a fight. So to help prepare uh, for this next part of the journey, God tells Moses Take a, a leader from each one of the 12 tribes and send them out to spy, uh, to investigate, to search out the promised land. They go for 40 days to search it out. Find out what kind of land it is, what kind of people live there, what, what kind of, of vegetation grows there. Is it a good land? Is it a walled city? What, what, what will you find there? Is it fortified? Is it a safe place to live? Find out everything you can about uh, your, your promised land that I've given to you. And the spies are responsible for coming back and then reporting what kind of land and people live in, the, in, in, the, in uh, Canaan. And the problem is, when those 12 spies return, they got two different stories. They all see the same thing. They all go the same place. And 10 of them say, we, ain't, we can't do this. It's a good land. Everything's laid out, but we can't do it. And two of them says, yes, we can. Why, why, why the difference? Why the difference? What, what's wrong uh, with, with these reports? Look at verse 27 through 29. They, they, uh, they, they come back, and they, they speak to Moses, they speak to the people. It says, we came to the land that you sent us to. They say it's flowing with milk and honey. That means it's a rich land, it's a fertile land. This is the fruit of it. They, 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 they're carrying a, a cluster of, of grapes and some pomegranates and figs. Two men carrying them on a, on, a, on a stake between them. You know, grapes you pick up at the store that you hold in your hand, one cluster of grapes. They got a cluster of grapes that takes two men to carry it on a stake. They're saying this is the kind of fruit that they're, they say, but verse 28, nevertheless, the people uh, there are strong that dwell in the land and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites dwell in the mountains. The Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. Look at verse number 31. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report. Everybody say evil report. Evil report. They, they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched uh, unto the children of Israel, saying, The land uh, through which we have gone <clears throat> to search it is a land that eats up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it, are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants. Everybody say giants. giants. We saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. They said, we were, we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, so we were in their sight. 
The, the, the first thing I want to point out is the evil report. The, the writer calls this the evil report. The, the ten spies report is called an evil report because it's based on doubt. They, they never challenged the people. They were there just to, to search it out, to spy it out, to see what it was like. They never challenged them. They, they didn't know if those giant of, of people that they saw, they didn't know if they could fight or whether they were cream puffs. They, they, they didn't know, they, but it was doubt. They, they, they didn't know their, their report was, was purely speculation. Their report was based on what they saw without consideration to the promise of God. Whenever the church thinks and acts based on sight and sight alone instead of God's word, we'll be overcome by doubt. The, 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 the world that we have to contend with, the, the things that we have to contend with, uh, the, the, the media, the violence, the sinful nature, the lust, the fleshliness is, is so great in the world. If we look at it and, and say that God has told us to go out and be his witnesses, we'll say, oh, no, Lord, they too far gone. Ain't no hope for them. So, but, but, but look at what it, look at what it says, if you will, turn to Numbers 14. What happens after they give their report? All the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. We you come back with a report of doubt, a report of, of, of uh, not of faith but of fear, and it impacts everybody. And, and all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, and the whole congregation said unto them, Would that God we had died in the land of Egypt. Now we won't go back to Egypt. Or would God that we had died in this wilderness. They got a death wish. And wherefore hath God brought us unto this land to, to fall by the sword that our wives and our children should be a prey? Were, were it not better for us to return into Egypt? And they said to one another, let's make us a captain and let's return to Egypt. They, they have been, they heard the doubt and now on top of the doubt, now they're discouraged. Everybody they say discouraged. Uh, the, the doubt of the ten spies spreads among the people and causes discouragement and their discouragement resulted in fear and they failed to acknowledge God because they were focusing on their own weaknesses and they were looking at purely at the people that they saw and the land that they saw and they never thought one thing about the God that had brought them out of Egypt. They just said, well, let us go back to Egypt or maybe we should have died uh, while we were in the wilderness or, or, or let's just kill these leaders we got and let's get us some more leaders that'll, that'll take us a different direction. The, the doubt has, has turned to discouragement and the discouragement to fear, and they really don't know what to do. They had forgotten how the Egyptians evidently oppressed them. They had forgotten how God devastated Egypt with the plagues. They, they had forgotten about the safety of, of living in Goshen while God sent the plagues upon Egypt and they were living in Goshen and the scripture says, but the lights were on in Goshen and they were safe in Goshen where they were living uh, there and while the Egyptians suffered. They, they had forgotten about, about coming through the Red Sea and because Moses just obeyed God and held up his hand and the Red Sea backed up on both sides, they walk across safe. Safely. And then when the Egyptians follow behind them, he, he holds up his hand again and the Red Sea comes together and, and kills Pharaoh and all of his men. They had forgotten about how they'd been eating manna every day. They had forgotten about how God brought water out of a rock. They'd forgotten about all of these things simply because they looked and saw some people for 40 days. They didn't know what kind of people they really were. They just saw big people and they thought it was too big a they saw giants and sometimes giants in our life make us want to curl up and go and hide in the corner somewhere but we can't we can't run away from giants we can't run away from obstacles we can't hide we've got to go forward and if we're going to go forward the the people of God the kingdom of God the saints of God have to declare we're well able He gave them clothes that didn't wear out for all these years. Sandals that didn't wear out. 
you got to imagine how we going to keep walking through all this time to, and, and nothing wearing out. The effects of fear are always negative and many times disastrous to us. The scripture from 1 John chapter number 4 tells us that fear has torment. And then whenever we get afraid, it, it, does, it doesn't have to manifest itself. The, the, the danger doesn't have to come. All we have to do is, is fear, and we will be tormented. Can't go to sleep at night. Can't stay awake in the day. Don't know when to, what to do. Turn off the lights, close the shades, lock all the doors, but still don't feel safe. Got a guard dog, got an alarm system, but, but still don't feel safe because of fear. All, all of those things. The, all, that, all that these 10 spies mention is the fact that these people over there are giants. They never mention the size of their God. They just say the people there are giants. What they needed to remember is that their God is bigger than the giants. That, that the same God that brought them out of Egypt, the same God that sent the plagues, the same God that spared them through the plagues was the same God that was still with them. And today we got we, 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 we to ask ourselves, don't tell nobody else, but just, just think about the giants in your life. You got children going back to school, you, you know. They, they gave you the material. They gave you the syllabus. You know, they say, oh, Lord, I see a giant. <laughs> you know, and then if you heard about the professor, if you heard about the teacher, you, you done started saying, everybody say, he, she is so tough. You haven't even been in their class. You know, some of us have to go to work, and it's, it's maybe not the best situation when we go to work. The, the fear of the job, the fear of the manager, the fear of, of, of the evaluation calls us to shut down and run around with fear instead of in confidence to do the job that we know that we can do. And sometimes it's a job we've been doing for years, but just one thing changes, and then, and then we figure that, that, oh, I can't do this. It's, it's too big. It's too difficult. What, what giants is it, are, are, are there that we have? Maybe it's, maybe it's the, the, the physical. Maybe it's the health. Maybe, maybe the medical situation. You know, stuff is hurting that ain't ever hurt before, and you didn't even know it was there until it started hurting. And, and then you got to go to the doctor, and, and if you get a certain age, you know, uh, you, you ain't got a whole lot of places to go except to the doctor. You know, you sort of, your schedule sort of, <laughs> when's the next time I go to the doctor? Uh, but, 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 it, but it could be the family situation. It could be the difficulty of relationships. It could be, it could be the husband, could be the wife, could be the children, and you done, you done declared before God they crazy. Take it, take it back and say we're well able. You, you call them crazy and that's what they act like, crazy. Maybe you need to call them something different. And maybe it's not that. Maybe it's the, just the neighborhood. Maybe it's the danger of the day. Maybe it's just the shooting. Every, every morning you wake up and on the news it's another shooting and somebody else. And you thought you lived in that fine neighborhood where stuff like that didn't happen. But it's happening everywhere. You thought the gate would keep them out, but they climb over the gate and come in your neighborhood. What, what, what giants do, do we have? Our responsibility is don't, don't fall in the trap of this evil report that is based on doubt because fear is not from God. Uh, 2 Timothy 1 and 7 tells us, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. And there are some things that we need to remember from the word of God that will help us. There, there, there are probably some, some, some scriptures that we need to commit to memory. You know, Deuteronomy tells them to, to teach their children to write it down on the wall, write it on, above the door, put it as frontless before the eyes, write it on the hand, the wrist, do, do whatever is necessary. Sometimes we have to do that so that we don't fall in the trap of fear. 
So the evil report is based on doubt that leads to discouragement because they report only what they see and are fearful. No believer or church or saint can move forward burdened with doubt and discouragement and fear. And that's evil report. Everybody say evil report. evil report. Thank God there's another report. Everybody get glad. Praise God. <laughs> I think y'all went down. <laughs> look, look, at verse number, <laughs> look at verse number 30. We, we, we read all those verses about what they said, the, the evil report. One verse for the good report. Just one verse. Sometimes we've got to be careful about saying a whole lot of stuff. Sometimes it's better to just say a few words about God. The majority say we can't do it. Only two say we can do it. This is the good report. The two, the, the two spies come back with the good report. Their report is a good report because it's based on what God said. Look at verse number, uh, chapter 13. Look at verse number 1 and 2. The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Send thou men, that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel. Of every tribe of their fathers shall you send a man, every one a ruler among men. God already said, I'm giving you this land. God already knew what was there. He told them, send, send the spies, send those to search out the land to see what was there. Not for God's benefit, but for their benefit. But, but, but the bottom line is God said, I've already given it to you. It's a report of faith and not fear that those two come back and say, we're well able. So, so here's what they happened. Here's what happened. First of all, they paused. Verse number 30 says, Caleb stilled the people. To pause is, is not a call to inactivity. It, it, it's, it's to pause one's soul in order to, to properly respond to God. And we, sometimes we have to pause so we can get balanced, so we can think right, and, and so we can make good decisions. Uh, Psalm 46 and 10, 10 says, be still and know that I am God. I'll be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Some of the time, we just have to stop and pause. You ever talk to somebody that was in a fit of fear and, 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 all, and, and they just had a whole lot to say and they couldn't be still and they just kept on talking and saying the same thing over and over again. And sometimes you have to tell, wait a minute, be, stop, be still, be quiet. Don't say anymore, because the more they talk, the more they're working themselves up into a frenzy of fear. And some of the times, what we have to do first is pause and stop so that we can think right. Some of the time, we can't think right because of the fear, the discouragement, whatever it is. We're just in a, in a fit, and, and nobody can reason with us. God can't even reason with us like that. It's not you unless it's you. Truth is, we've all been there. That, that we met some situation that looked like a giant to us, that looked insurmountable to us. We may not have told anybody, but there was something going on under the skin that was, that was raging. and We didn't know exactly what to do, we didn't know how to react, but, but, but we know that something was going on. But, but through that, God can help us if we'll just first pause. And then secondly of all, look, look, look at uh, chapter number 14 in Numbers, verse 5 and 6. Then Moses, th th this is after the, the people are, are, are getting all worked up and say, let's, let's get some, some more leaders. And go back to Egypt. Verse 5 and 6, Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of, of the congregation of the children of Israel. And Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, which were uh, of them that, that searched the land, rent their clothes. The, the second thing after they, after they, they paused, they, they told them, be still, be quiet. The, the, the second thing that, that uh, Moses, Aaron, Joshua, and Caleb did 
is that they position themselves. They position themselves in prayer and humility before God. Before, before uh, they, they, they got angry with the people and, and, and struck back at them, uh, they, they, they got before God. They paused, then they positioned themselves to God. They, they were positioning themselves in agreement with God. That's what prayer is when we come in agreement with God. Uh, it, it's not just giving God our grocery list when we pray. It is also our opportunity to position our our mind and our heart in agreement with God and in agreement with his word. And that's why it's so important many times for us to know the word of God so that we can recall the word of God as we pray. Many times we don't know what to ask for without knowing what the will of God is. We know the will of God because we know his word. And so even when we pray, it is a good idea uh, because if, if we're left to pray for our, ourselves, many times, most of us have experienced this, we, we determine we're going to pray. And we're going to determine we're going to pray as never before. And we get down to pray as never before, and after a minute, we're burned out. But, but many times it, when we know the word of God and, and we pray the word of God, it, it helps to remind us first of his promise and, and to the power of his word to help us in every situation. It's not that God doesn't know his word. It's just to help us, to send us. And so they position themselves in agreement with God. 1 Peter 5 and 6 tells us, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt you in due season. They humbled themselves so that God could exalt them. And when we humble ourselves, we can be assured that ultimately we will be exalted. God will lift us up. God will help us, and God will strengthen us. All we have to do is humble ourselves. Then thirdly, they, they proclaim after they position themselves, after they pause, listen to what happens in, in verses 7 through 10 in chapter 14. They spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, he'll bring us into the land and give it to us, a land that flows with milk and honey. Only, listen here, here, here's their instruction. Only don't rebel against the Lord. Neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us. We're going to eat them alive. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Everybody say, the Lord is with us. So do not fear them. But all the congregation bade stone them with stones, and the, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. Then the, the final thing they did after they paused, after they positioned, is that they proclaimed to the people. They witnessed to the people. They spoke to the people of the goodness of the Lord, despite being talking of stoning them. They, they, they were there and speaking to the people that they that these people are bred for us. They, they don't have any defense for us. The Lord is with us. The Lord's going to help us. That's why we're able to do it. It's not because of us. It's not because of our strength. It's not because of our power. It's because of God's power. So they proclaim the goodness of the Lord. The, the scripture from Isaiah says, if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and if you rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword because the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. If, if we'll be willing and obedient, God has promised us the good of the land. And these are days when the people of God surely need to follow the word of God uh, in order to have the good of the land. This report of faith pleases God and it's only faith that pleases God. Hebrews 11 and 6 tells us without faith it's impossible to please God for they that come to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. The two spies said we're well able to possess the land and overcome it because God keeps his promise. 
God doesn't make a promise. God doesn't say, I've given you the land and then take the land back. God had promised them the land. All he wanted them to do was walk forth and possess it. And these are days when the church, when the kingdom of God, when the people of God, when you and I need to walk forward to possess the land. There is so much evil. There's so much devastation in the land that there's got to be lights shining in the darkness. There's got to be the, the city that's set on the hill. We can't run away and hide simply because the days are evil. You and I have to believe that we're well able. The, the good report requires that we pause to acknowledge God. The good report requires that we position ourselves before God in prayer and humility. The good report requires that we proclaim the goodness of God. God's judgment came. And God's judgment came against uh, the, the people of Israel because of their unbelief. The, the, the ten spies, when you read further in, in chapter four, 14, the ten spies die of a plague. Then God says, all the Jews that are age 20 and older, you're going to die in the wilderness. He says, a new nation is going to still come into the promised land. But you're going to have to spend 40 years wandering in the wilderness. One year for every day that the spies went out. They spied for 40 days. And it's going to take them 40 years. And, and, and I just believe it can't be that difficult to find the promised land. If they, if they went and spied it out in 40 days... God just took them on a journey for 40 years until the old generation died out. And then they could enter into the promised land. The children of, uh, of, of Israel prepared to go uh, into Canaan, and, and Moses warns them not, not to go. Now, now that they hear God's judgment, now they want to get tough and go. And Moses tells them, don't do it. And they tried to do it. And the people of the land beat them back and they had to turn around. They still didn't get it. It was still God's way. He, here, but but, but here's, 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 what I, here's what I recalled in all of this, as bad as that is. When they get to the promised land, in, in, in Joshua, Israel is getting ready to go to Jericho. And this time they send out spies. But somebody learned a lesson. We ain't going to send out 12 no more. We're going to send out two. <laughs> they, they send out two spies. And they say, the, the, the word is that Jericho is shut up or, or secured. Two walls around Jericho. Uh, the, the, the description is there, there's a, there, there is a, 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 a wall, a dirt wall. A, a dirt ramp up to one wall. And then there's a dirt ramp up to the second wall. Uh, one wall, uh, the, the inner wall, 20 to 26 feet high, 11 to 12 feet thick. The outer wall, 12 to 15 feet high, 6 feet thick. A and both of them having an earthen embankment. So, so after you after you uh, add the earth and the embankment, you got 46 to 50 feet or so or more of height. So to get to Jericho, you got to go over two walls, two earth and embankments to get to Jericho. There, there, there's a song that, that's written by, by uh, Donald Lawrence and some. I think they got the words to it. Y'all got the words to it. Giants do die. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. I done heard this, I done heard this song so many times. Giants, they die. Just walk around your Jericho wall. I heard the giants before. I heard the Jericho wall before, but I never put them together. Every giant isn't a person. So, so, so when they get to Jericho, they're not talking about giants. They're talking about this giant wall. We got to get to the people 
but the people are on the other side of the wall. The, 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 these, the, these two spies uh, that they sent out, they come back with this report of, about Jericho. Truly the Lord has delivered into our hands all the land for all the inhabitants of the country do faint because of us. It's a good report. Right. And, and one thing that happened is that the people in Jericho, they done already heard about this God and his people. Yeah. Rahab the harlot, she's already been a witness to them. She's already helped the, the spies out. Notice this time only two spies go, not 12, not 10. Two is the number of agreement. Or, or witness. Amos 3 tells us, can two walk together except they be agreed? And it's more than just two spies that agree. It's the fact that the spies agree with God. And when we agree with God, we have the majority. I don't care what's going on. We have the victory. I don't care how difficult it looks, how impossible it looks. Joshua and Israel engaged Jericho. And most of us know the story, even if we only know the, the song uh, from children's card class, that Joshua fought the battle of Jericho and the walls came tumbling down. And, and it, is, it is the different kind of, of battle that is fought because because God tells them not to do anything, not to attack, just for six days walk around the wall of the city. And, and to make it more difficult, don't say nothing. Keep your mouth closed. Walk around the wall one time for six days, and then on the seventh day walk around seven times, and then shout unto the Lord. And that's what the people did. Uh, they, they, didn't, they didn't take their spear. They didn't take the bow and arrow. They didn't take their sword out to cut off anybody's head. They just did it God's way because with God, we're well able. It, it doesn't matter how difficult. It doesn't matter how big. It doesn't matter how vast it is. It doesn't matter how unlikely the victory seems. All we've got to do is to do it God's way. And after following God's plan for seven days, then in, in, the, in the words of the scripture, it is like the walls just implode. It's like somebody set off dynamite inside of the walls and it just implodes and the people go in and they take the city simply because they were able to do it God's way. We're well able, whether it's Canaan's giants or whether it's Jericho's walls or whether it's your giant or my giant or your wall or my wall, we are well able. And we gotta de we've got to determine what kind of giant we got, what kind of wall we got is before us. If it's doubt or if it's fear, or if it's unbelief, we got to know that we're still well able. That whether it's lust or envy or, or whether it's jealousy or whether it's sickness or poverty, that we're still well able. And whether or not it's weakness or stress or anxiety or pressure or worry or anger or frustration, we are still well able. Whether it's discouragement or despair or bitterness or strife or contention, we are well able no matter matter what the situation of this world is, we are well able. Just consider the fact that your Lord and your Savior and my Lord and my Savior came down to be a sacrifice for you and I. And, and he had to face the biggest giant of all, and that's the giant of death. And yet he said, this, this is the reason that I came. I came to lay down my life. I came to give my life a ransom for many. And, and in the midst of this, he is been bludgeoned and he's being buffeted. He's being booted, brutalized. He's being beaten. Uh, he, he's by stripes on his back. Uh, they have mocked him and humiliated him. And, and yet he says, this is the reason that I came. And, and most of us would have figured th there's got to be a better way to do this. We can't do it this way and continue to get the victory. But he said, if I lay my life down, then I can take it up again. Uh, because I've got power to lay it down. I've got power also to take it up. And he, that's exactly what he did. They put him in the grave. He was there three days. And then on the third day out of the grave, he comes with all power in heaven and in earth in his hands. If that's not an example of God's power to bring victory, I don't know what he is that we would trust the Savior who gave his life, who died 
on Calvary who was buried in another man's tomb, but yet in three days got up out of the tomb declaring all power in heaven and in earth is in my hand and then trust us to come along and if you'll follow him, the same power he has, he gives to us. The same peace he has, he gives to us. The same joy he has, he gives to us. Uh, that, that is the victory of, of, of the story of Jesus, that we would follow him. That we would follow him. We're well able. Tell your neighbor again, we're well able. We're well able. It's not too hard. It's not too difficult. Uh, uh, the, the, the giant is not too big and the wall is not too thick. We're well able. We're well able to overcome it. I don't care how, how difficult the test is. I don't care how difficult the class is. I don't care how draining the work is. I don't care how difficult the neighborhood is. We are well able. We're well able. We are well able. Yes, we can. Yes, we can, somebody. Yes, we can. We will be victorious, and we will overcome. Why don't you stand to your feet? Come on, give God praise. When we, when we walk with faithfully of God, we are well able. doesn't matter if, if we're outnumbered or if we're the outcast. It doesn't matter about any of those things. We're still able. And we are not just able, we are well able. Well able to overcome it. Well able to be victorious. They said in chapter 14, they said, Now if the Lord delight us in us, he'll bring us into the land. Give us a land that flows with milk and honey. He says, only don't rebel against the Lord. Don't, don't rebel against the Lord. Don't fear the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Their defenses departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear not. Does anybody know that the Lord is with us as his people, that the Lord is with us? I, 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 out of all the things, in the, that, that might be one of the most comforting truths that I found in Scripture that the Lord is with me. There, there, there can be nothing as fearful or as frustrating than being alone. But if you know that somebody's with you, it makes you a little bolder, a little stronger, make you raise your, raise your voice, the volume of your voice a little, a little more confidence, if somebody's with you. But to know that the Lord is with us, to know that the Lord is with us, to know that the defense of those who come against us is broken down and departed simply because the Lord is with us. If you got to drive home today, and go home to an empty house or an empty apartment. I want you to know assuredly that the Lord is with you. And if you go home with the whole family, you still need to know that the Lord is with you. <laughs> because sometimes you can be in a crowd and still feel all alone. But it's, it's the Lord who promises, I'll never leave you. I will never forsake you. So that you may boldly say that the Lord is my helper. And I won't fear what any man shall do to me. The Lord is with us. That's why we're well able. And, and today, I, I, I pray uh, that, that we will respond to God's word in faith, not in fear, that we will respond to God's word. Say, yes, I can. We're well able. Whatever the giant is, there's a big wall before you. Time to speak to the giant, time to speak to the wall. Maybe it's time to do like David did when he faced Goliath and just run straight to him. And throw your, throw your rock, throw your best shot. 
in order to be victorious. Whatever you're facing, you need to know that the Lord is with you. And the Lord is everywhere. There is not a place that, that the Lord is not, is not present. But the Lord does promise his people a special relationship. And for you and I, we need to make that decision that, that we are his people. That's really the difference for, for Israel here. They're God's people. And he's making provision for them. And as his people today, he'll make provision for you and I. And he's made provision for you and I for our eternal salvation when he gave his son Jesus Christ to die on Calvary. To shed his innocent blood to be the payment for your sins and mine. And it is our, it is our privilege to receive his sacrifice as a payment for our sins. If you've never done it, if you've never given your life to the Lord, today is a good day to do it. If you've never said yes to, to his invitation, today is a good day to say yes. If, if today, if you want to make that decision, today if you make that decision, yes, I want to be saved. Yes, I want to be a child of God. Yes, I want to be a part of the family of God. Won't you raise your hand right where you are? You want to make that decision today? You need, uh, maybe you need a church home. Maybe you, you're, you're, you're not in fellowship with, with a local congregation. You can make that decision today. Did you raise your hand? See a, a hand there. Praise God for her. Amen. You need special prayer today. You need special prayer today. Did you raise your hand? Praise God. Praise God. Let, let's, let's pray and then we're, we're going to speak with the young lady there. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. And we praise you, Lord, for your goodness and for your kindness, Lord. We thank you for all that you've done and for all that you're doing. Now, God, have your way. Have your way in our life, Lord. There are giants in our lives. There are walls before us to keep us out, Lord, to keep us separated. But, Lord, you want us to conquer. You want us to go forward. You want us to win. We want us... You want us to be victorious. So we pray, God, that you'd have your way and bless us, Lord, and cause us to be a blessing, Lord. Oh, God, help us to walk in faith today and not in fear. God, have your way. And thank you, Lord, for all that you've done and all that you're doing in our life. Bless us, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Come on, give God praise. Come on, give God praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's, let's thank God for those who have joined us virtually as we sign off today.